titled Oti. Believers and Negligence. Abakoloayo Nabanganagi. Believers and Negligence. Abakoloayo Nabanganagi. So, human beings in general and believers in particular. Abantu. Um, when we do things, we either do them willfully or by negligence. Uh, if you have had time to follow the court proceedings, especially where there's issues of, I don't want to say murder because murder then it to be like a verdict, but um, I want to talk about where a person dies in the process of a certain activity or an event. You, you will realize that sometimes they will say a person has been convicted of murder. Which will be defined as an intentional uh, taking away of someone's life. It's intentional. So there's an intention involved. Uh, if a crime has to constitute murder. And then you, you have this other term they use, capable homicide. So that is when you are doing something capable homicide. So that is when there's a taking away of a life, but not through intention, but through negligence. So you can see that there's intention and there's also negligence. So I want to talk to believers about areas in our lives where we may be negligent. Let's close our eyes for prayer. Father, I thank you for this opportunity. Thank you, Jesus. May I speak your word with sincerity. May I speak the truth in love. Yes, Lord. And Lord, I yield every faculty of this body to you, Lord, as thank I you, minister Jesus. to you, your children. I do so, Father, understanding that one day I have to give an account yes, of everything that I've taught them. I therefore, Father, pray that this message centers around you. Yes, Lord. This message centers around our apostle and high priest of our profession, Jesus Christ. I pray that, Lord, in delivering this message, in sharing this message, Lord, I will be found faithful by you. In the mighty, glorious name of Jesus. And I pray for every person in this place today. And I also pray for those that will be watching this message via YouTube. That Lord, even as we hear your word, may we not harden our hearts. In the mighty, glorious name of Jesus, I pray and everyone say, Amen. Amen. So, the dictionary definition of the word negligence... It, 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 you'll find a, a verb or a noun, but you, you have get to give little attention or respect to. So to give little attention or respect to. And you also have to leave undone or unattended to, especially through carelessness. carelessness. And also you have the one that says to disregard do nothing about, fail to care for. To disregard, do nothing about, fail to care for. So now, this is what I want to talk about. To say, at times, believers, there are things that we, we may disregard. There may be things that we do nothing about. And there may be things that we fail to care for. Now, in the Bible, the word ne neglect. In Greek is which means to leave behind in a good sense. Or let remain over again in a good sense. And in a bad sense means to desert or to abandon. So now, there are certain things as believers that we might or we may desert or we may abandon. 
And I'm going to share with you a couple of scriptures that highlight to us those things. And then I trust that the Lord is going to bless you. Can you say amen? Amen. Right. The first one, let's look at Matthew chapter 23, verse 23. 23 verse 23. Yeah, so now when, when I was taking down the scriptures, I was using the Berean uh, study Bible. So when, when I use the word neglect in your Bible or your translation may not necessarily have the word neglect. It may have a different word, but I, I'm sure the, the spirit will be the same in terms of what the message is conveyed is. So when we look at Matthew 23 verse 23. must find 23 verse 23. It says, Who unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites? For ye pay tithe of mint and, and anise and common, and have omitted the weighter matters of the law. Then the, the version, the Berean Study Bible will say, You have neglected. You have neglected uh, the weighter matters of the law, uh, judgment, mercy, and, and faith. This out yet to have done, and not to leave the other undone. So, so the other area, so the first areas that I want to talk about uh, in terms of what we could neglect or abandon and desert is the issues of justice. And when you look at the issue of justice, uh, you have, it says matters of the law, and number one is justice. Can we say justice? As believers, we may be found to being to have been negligent when it comes to the issue of justice. And after justice is the issue of mercy. And the, 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 the other version will, will say love. And then you also have a faithfulness. Hallelujah. Amen. So these are the things that we may abandon. It's possible to abandon justice. And it is possible to abandon love. And it's possible to abandon faithfulness. And that's why the Bible says, consider uh, 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 it says, consider uh, our apostle or consider the apostle. It says, consider the apostle and the high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus, who was faithful to the one that has appointed him. So, so it's possible for us to abandon faithfulness. And if you have to reflect on your life today, are you a faithful believer? Are you financially faithful? Are you faithful in the broader sense of the word faithful? towards God. If you have to reflect on your life as a believer, are you walking in love or you have abandoned love? If you reflect on, on your life, are you a person of justice or not? Hallelujah. Amen. And we move to Nehemiah chapter 13. chapter 13. And we are going to read verse 11. So I, I didn't mark it here. So I've got to go back to the index so that I can go straight to the page number. Uh, Nehemiah. Thirteen. Then we are going to look at verse 11. It says, Then contended I with the rulers and said, Why is the house of the Lord forsaken? And I gathered them together and set them in their place. So the other area we can abandon or neglect or show negligence towards 
is towards the house of God. Hallelujah. Amen. We can abandon the house of God. And understand that we may have different views when it comes to the issue of the house of God. But there's no scripture that says you do not have to take care of the house of God. And I know that God is no longer living in a house made by human hands. But he stays in a house. But there's nothing that says you must neglect the physical house where believers gather. And when we're saying, uh, you know, you have to show care or concern towards the house of the Lord, we're not talking about being like Zarus, but, but having a proper, decent structure and, 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 you know, proper housekeeping. So, I'm asking you a question today to say, what is your involvement when it comes to the house of the Lord? Because he had forsaken the house of the Lord. And, and, and we, 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 can, we can talk about, you know, people that desert, physically desert the house of God. You find the, the house of God or a church or, or a structure where people gather, where believers gather, leaking and falling apart, but your own house is not leaking and falling apart. And this cannot be very far from the scripture that says your heart is where your treasure is. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And let's look at number three. We, let's go to Proverbs chapter 13. Isaac chapter 13. So now and then I've got to look. So by the way, my my MacBook is acting up. So that's why I'm struggling today. Computer, I'm finding this laptop. But we'll get it fixed. So Proverbs 13. So it's it's not too much. If you wanna buy me a MacBook, please do so. Plus, my birthday is coming on the 30th of June. The fact that you don't have it doesn't mean you don't have to buy it for me. So, it's your choice. Right. So, let's look at Proverbs 13. We read verse 18. Isaac 13, verse 18. And reads as follows. Um, Poverty and shame shall be to him that refuseth instruction. But he that regardeth reproof shall be honored. So, so the Berean Study Bible will talk about uh, neglecting discipline. At times, as, as believers, we neglect, we abandon, we, we desert, we, we, we don't care, we disregard discipline. Amen. And, and, and we forget the scripture that says... God loves, uh, uh, corrects those whom he loves. The other version or translations will say, God disciplines those whom he loves. And, and, and because we sometimes miss that scripture, everyone that disciplines you, you then see it as hatred instead of seeing it as love. Or you measure God's love in your life by what he does or what he gives to you and you, you don't pay much attention to the discipline of the Lord. Whereas a person that doesn't discipline you doesn't love you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And, and, and the Bible then says a child that or son that is not disciplined is an illegitimate child. Amen. Amen. So if God does not discipline you, then you, you've got to then uh, begin to see yourself as an illegitimate son. If your own parents do not discipline you, I understand the pain in these days of parents having to discipline children because they've got rights, uh, they can talk back, and, and you're expected to uh, you know, listen to them and all those kind of things, which is unbiblical or which is unscriptural. But rather as a parent, go to jail 
for disciplining your child knowing that you fulfilled the scriptures than to stay at home and your child is all over kufanele ma umzali umkhuze umntwana nanoma ngabe seku nje kula malanga ngamane wayoboshwa because sometimes we take scripture out of context when it talks about us obeying our leaders we don't obey our leaders at all cost we obey our leaders as far as it's within the scriptures anything outside the scriptures i have the right a biblical right to say no sihlonipha abaholi bethu ngokuya kwezwi uma ngabe kungaphandle kwezwi asizukwenza lokho i don't know if you're hearing this angazi noma niyakuso because sometimes as believers we we do things and we call the scripture to say no but the bible says we must obey it no the bible says we must obey leaders but the context of it is that you obey leaders as far as you know whatever they are expecting you to do aligns with the scriptures anything that does not align to scripture i have a scriptural right to say no kufanele sihloni pha abaholi ngokuya kwezwi because god is going to you know i will account to god based on my faithfulness to him not my faithfulness to you ngizokhaza ukunkulunkulu ngokuthembeka kwami hallelujah amen right so now we must come to a point as believers kufanele sifike la njengamakholwa where we begin to introspect ourselves at, and so far as discipline is concerned la sizihlola khona sizibuke ngokuya kokulungisana how do you take discipline as a believer ukuthatha njani wena ukulungiswa njengomzalwane and 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 the discipline that that we try to instill or any other person tries to instill in our lives how far are we with it or have we neglected it or have we abandoned it what have you done with with the teachings that you've been receiving in church and you have received from other servants of the lord how far are you in implementing that in your own life wenzene ngalezi injumayelo ozithole ngcekwini zenkosi uyakwenza yini lokho tshelwa kona and and by the way how do you disregard discipline and continue to say you are saved by grace because the bible says concerning grace that grace will teach you to say no to ungodliness and to live a self disciplined life so you cannot disregard discipline but still say or make mention of grace because then that's a paradox awukwazi ukubala umusa uma ngabe wena uhlule kukhuzwa hallelujah amen if you if you begin to disregard discipline uma uyekela ukukhuzwa just know that you are slowly but surely moving away from the things of god yes ukuthi wena kancane kancane sokuchelelana nezinto zikankulunkulu because the deception that satan brings in our lives is that when people discipline you satan will tell you that they hate you usathane uletha lokho ukuthi uma ngabe sikhuzwa kusho ukuthi abantu bayazizonda satan will tell you that they are abusing you uzothu usathane bayakuhlukumeza satan will tell you that they are limiting you But if you allow him then trust me that we are going to get to a point where we don't discipline you and the reason we will not be disciplining you is because by disregarding discipline you will have defined yourself outside the fellowship of the saints Then let's look at another point which we can neglect We look at Hebrews chapter 13. There's a couple of scriptures so you must be able to write them down if you can't read them here. Uma ngabe uyakhona ukubhala phansi ungabhala wonke lama lama verse. Hebrews 13. Incwadi yaba Hebreu chapter number 13. Then we, we we look at verse 2. It says Be not forgetful to entertain strangers for thereby some have entertained angels unaware. So they are the the, the Berean study Bible will say uh, do not neglect to show hospitality. So the other point is hospitality to show hospitality. Ugnagegelana. So it says do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers because in so doing others have welcomed or received angels unaware. Lithi kufanele sinakekelane ngoba abanye bazithole sebanakekela iyingelo sibangazi. So which means you know when 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 at times when an angel appears ngesinye isikhathi ingelo simayivela they may not appear the way you are expecting them to appear in white and and everything else they may still appear in a human form and because when you are not aware you may be neglecting to show hospitality to angels because 
the reason these people showed hospitality to them is because they came in a human form. Hallelujah. Amen. The person that, you know, walks around the street and they see you outside the yard or outside the house and say, can I have water? And, and you ask if you are a reservoir. Uh, and, and they walk away. It's fine, but be careful that you, you do not give that attitude answer. To an angel of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. So it says we should not neglect to show hospitality. Of course, the specifics is to strangers, but in, in general, let's show hospitality. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's show hospital. How hospitable are you? Don't be a clinic. Be a hospital. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't be clinical. Show hospitality. Amen. It says do not neglect to show hospitality. You know sometimes, and, and, and listen, listen, Bazalan. Sometimes before you throw away the food you don't want, think about the person you passed at the robot who asked for food and you refused. We are so heartless that we may refuse to give a person bread at a robot and go and throw away that bread at home. Let me, let, me, let me show you a very simple way of assessing the condition of our heart. Because if we care about people, if we want to show hospitality to people, what you will do is you, you've got expiry date. Now, when the expiry date is approaching and you realize that what is left... When the expiry date comes, you will not have finished it. Is it not that the time for you to go and share, rather than to wait for things to expire and throw them away? Can I get an amen? Amen. But because we are so self-centered, we do not have that thought to say, no man, instead of throwing this thing away, there are possibly people that don't have food. But we cannot share because we have, we have neglected or we have abandoned or deserted uh, showing hospitality. And let's go back again to Proverbs. You can write it down, Proverbs chapter, chapter 8. Chapter 8. Then we read verse 33. It says, Hear instruction and be wise and refuse it not. In other words, do not neglect instructions. How many of us are abandoning or deserting or disregarding instructions? Because one of the spirits from Satan that is penetrating through believers is a spirit of rebellion. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That's what the Bible says. Obey your leaders. Listen to them. But how many of us are actually doing it? It says submit to your leaders. For they watch over your souls. As ones that must give an account before God for your souls. So it says, do not neglect instructions. Do not 
disregard instructions as long as those instructions are aligned with the word of God. Do not neglect those instructions. Because in the times that we live in, it would seem to me that it's, it's like all the believers in the world, they come from a place in Limpopo called Makana Kubuso. The there's so much rebellion in the house of the Lord. Pastors are having it so hard to lead believers. Because believers are growing to be rebellious. Hallelujah. Amen. Evaluate yourself. Evaluate your life. And ask yourself. What is your attitude? What is your attitude towards instructions? Because a genuine servant of the Lord will not instruct you contrary to what the Bible expects of you. Hallelujah. Amen. And let's look at Matthew chapter 6. We are reading verse 16. It says, Moreover, when you have fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces, that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say to you, they have their reward. So the other part that you can neglect is appearance. Hallelujah, church. Amen. Appearance. Understand? So these people, when they fast, they will, you know, neglect their appearance so that everyone can see that they are in fasting. So it's possible as believers to neglect or to disregard or to desert or to abandon our appearance. So, so as much as here the context is, is, is uh, around fasting, but the principle is the same, that our appearance is important. Our appearance matters. How we dress up as believers matters. I often drive around and with, 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 the, with my wife and, and, and we see, I, I comment, but though I don't keep quiet, I comment. And, and I see this woman walk on the road with some mini skirts and they are fighting to pull it down. But I'm saying, if, if you don't want us to see your thighs, whichever way they appear, why did you have to wear that short skirt? And because people take offense when you talk about clothing, people are coming to church dressed anyhow. And some they even love this front seat in a short skirt. You come front seat, you talanya four, us kombi sama tanga, matanga, whatever, matanga wako. I just take back. <laughs> so it it matters how we dress up. Kubalegi le intlele stoga ngayo. So appearance matters. You must dress a believer in a horrible, in, a, in an honorable way. You see brothers in church, they have too many belts at home, but they choose to put their trousers just in, in the middle or center of their buttocks. I don't know why. What's wrong with your waist? Why, why can't you put your trouser in your... What do you lose? What do you gain putting your trouser here? These things we don't talk about them in church because people take offense and leave the church. But listen to me. If you want to be successful and you want to grow spiritual. Here is the matter that our appearance matters. R rather let people tell you at the age of 16 that you dress like Umagogo. It's fine. At least you are dressed in a decent way. 
Upalegile in the less Koganga, you know, no more local Kunga Sakulumegi, Galule Mabandleni, or Babandu Bayanga. At least I don't hamba. see anyone here. But you find these people dressed like in cleavage. I don't know whether it's still cleavage, but it's no longer cleavage because it reveals everything here. And you are not breastfeeding for that matter, but we have to see Amabelo Wako in church. And you are a believer. Listen, when we come to church, we are not interested in the breasts. We are interested in the fellowship of the believers or of the saints without any sense of distraction. Brothers, you must dress in a decent manner. If the underpen is a new one, it's fine. Keep it yourself. Put the trouser where it's supposed to be. We're not interested in underpants. As Dress in a decent way. Amen. Because for crying out loud, that trouser is even light. So how is it heavy to be here? Our appearance matters. Because it says these people, listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. It says these people, when they're in fasting, they neglect their appearance and listen to their motive. It says the motive is so that men can see. So, when you dress up, you must ask yourself, what is the motive of dressing the way you are dressing? Dressed in a way you want to be addressed. No crop tops, please. Because you put a crop top and you've got force. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Sometimes you see these guys in church, but, but go get some tight, very tight trousers, and you say, but what's happening? Abanya utola bo puti ba kogama prugaban pinyayo. Our appearance, Vasalwani, must not be neglected, especially as believers. We cannot dress like the world dresses up. Because we are representing a kingdom here. And a kingdom of God. Jesus. Dress decently. I'm not saying you must dress expensive, but you must dress in a decent way. Hallelujah. Amen. And let's go to Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews chapter number 13. The other day I met this lady. Uh, I was still in Sunnyside, Pretoria, and she was dressed, uh, she was like almost naked. And she kept trying to pull the skirt down. And I said to her, your reward is when people see you. Mm. That's your reward. Why do you have to pull it down? Because you wanted people to see you. They are seeing you. Mm. You know, there are small things that distract people. Mm. And sometimes people may dress uh, uh, innocently as, they, as the time they are dressing up. But what is the spirit behind how you are dressing. Because it's the spirit of saying, I want to be seen. Serious, the way believers dress these days, you will not even tell the difference between them and people that are unbelievers. Hebrews 13, we read verse 16. It says, but to do good and to communicate, forget not. For with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. So in other words, do not neglect good deeds. Do not neglect to do good. It says the Bible that God is pleased with when we do good. Hallelujah. Amen. Do good. What is it that is good? Because the Bible says, if you know the good, 
that you out to do and you do not do to you it's a sin lithi bible uma ngabe uyakwazi ukuhle ekufanele ukwenze ena ukwenzi kuwe isono that's why I, I, there's no believer that can cry ignore, uh, uh, ignorance to say no god i did not know the scripture no you do know the scripture the, our issue our struggle as believers is the hardness of the heart inkinga yethu thina makholo akusukuthi asilazizi kodwa siqinisa inhliziyo all of us sitting here sonke njengoba sihlelila Every moment we do wrong. It, it is not because we don't know the good we must do. We know. We don't want to do it. So here it says do not neglect to do good. Can you say God help me not to neglect to do good? Age uthi inkosi ngisize nginxayekele ukwenza ukuhle. To pray is good. To love one another is good. To forgive one another is good. To fellowship with one another is good. So do not neglect anything that is good. Acts chapter 6. Are you getting blessed? Amen. We are blessed. Acts chapter 6 verse 1 it says and in those days when the number of the disciples were multiplied there arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration so the other things that we can neglect is we can neglect people ogunya esingakiyekelela ukiyekelela abantu Sometimes parents can neglect their children. Children can neglect one another. Wife can neglect a husband, husband can neglect a wife. A church can neglect a pastor, a pastor can neglect a church. So we can neglect people. So here these widows were neglected. So believers, we must not we must not disregard people. We must not abandon people. We must not disregard people. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Husbands, do not neglect your wives. Wives, do not neglect your husbands. Because every time there's neglect, there's issues. And instead of addressing the issues, you want to address the person you have neglected. So we see in the book of Acts 6 that these widows were neglected. So my message to you, church, is that do not neglect one another. Jesus. Proverbs 1. Isaac chapter 1. Let's quickly go to Proverbs chapter 1. Verse 25. It reads as follows. But ye have set at naught all my counsel and would none of my proof, my reproof. So the other part that we or the other thing we can neglect is counsel. Or advice, godly advice. How many of you are implementing godly advice or are taking advice? You will realize that we're living in interesting times where it's very easy to disregard an advice or a godly counsel. We are living in times where people are unadvisable. Because the moment you advise them, they will tell you when you think you are better. Amen. And you are advising out of love, out of care, out of concern. But they will respond with an attitude to say, you think you are better. 
wena waluleka ngokunakekela nangokucabangela kodwa umuntu uze ukucela ukuthi ucabanga ukuthi ngcono and 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 when they they hit a wall they will remember the counsel they've disregarded uma ngabe sebeshayisa phambili bazokhumbula leseluleko bebangasifuna listen to me there Lanele. is a price to pay for disregarding godly counsel kukhona ozokubhadala ngenxa yokwala iseluleko sikaNkulunkulu Let me repeat it there is a price to pay when you disregard godly counsel Kukhona lokhu ozokubhadala ngokwala ukuthatha iseluleko sikaNkulunkulu Then let's go to Hebrews chapter 10 Incwadi yabaheberu chapter 10 I'm about 10. to close now Sengizovala Hebrews 10 we read verse 25 It reads as follows not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is but exhorting one another and so much the more as ye see the day approaching so do not neglect meeting together ningayekeli umkhuba wokuhlanganyela hallelujah amen believers that do not come to church amakholwa angezi enkonzweni they've neglected meeting together bayekelela ukuhlanganyela whatever reason When a believer does not come to church, they disregard coming together or meeting together. So here the Bible says do not neglect coming together as some have done it or as some are doing it. Lana ipepe lithi singawiye kumkhuba wokuhlanganyela njengalokha abanye bakwenza. Listen, sometimes we may not understand the spiritual significance of meeting together, but one thing we do know, our spirits know that there's always something that happens when we come together. We may not be able to explain it, but there's something that happens when believers gather together. Kukhona kwenzakalayo njalo amakholwa amawahlangana umoya wethu uyakwazi lo. the church is the last time they saw some people was last year february before the lockdown even when the churches were allowed to come together they've never returned to church abanye bahlala before i lockdown leya last year ngo march namanje abakwazi kubuyela bayohlanganya and some of them the reason now is of covid 19 uh, whatever wave 3 or whatever second wave but these people when they go to the malls and the shops and the taxis and everywhere they do not care about covid 19 that's a deception abanye bahlali bathi bahlaliswe i covid 19 kodwa uhlangana nabo emamol at the restaurants they are there nasema restaurant bakhona it's like these people they know covid 19 than anyone else they even know that covid 19 will be waiting for them at that door kwangathi abantu bathi covid 19 sibayayazi izobalinda lapha emnyango wesonto that's why i've always refused the narrative to say church is a super spreader of covid-19 i do not believe i do not buy into it i believe that church is a super spreader of life because we have received life and we have received it in abundance ngiyakholwa mina ukuthi ibandla lithwele impilo alikwazi ukuhambisa i covid-19 hallelujah amen do not neglect coming together with other believers whenever you get opportunity be like david i was glad when they said unto me let us go into the house of the lord ufanele ufane no david uthi ngajabula lapho bethi kima siyendlini ka jehova jesus the other one you can read at home uh, Acts chapter 6 verse 2 says because the apostle says in response to the issue of the widows that have been neglected to say we cannot neglect the ministry of the word of god so you can neglect the ministry of the word of god and in 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 14 you will realize that you can neglect the gift of the holy spirit in your life you can disregard the gift you can abandon the gift you can desert the gift how many of you are sitting here now or sitting in other churches you know that there's a gift of god or the gift of the holy spirit in your life but you are not doing anything about it bangakhi bethu 
Maybe because you were hurt somewhere and, 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 and the, the devil keeps whispering to you to say, even here they will hurt you. But listen to me, at work you keep working even though they hurt you. On the road you keep driving even though you've got reckless drivers around you. So why are we so tough when it comes to the things of God? Why are we so strict when it comes to the things of God? Such that a little bit of hurt, you are offended, you have got nothing to do with the things of God. But at work, on the road and outside, they keep hurting you but you keep going back. Mercy on us, God. Amen. The last one. Hebrews chapter 2. Verse 3. It says, How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him. So the other part that or the other thing we can neglect is salvation. We can disregard salvation. We can be careless. We can show carelessness around salvation. We can abandon salvation. We can desert salvation. And how many of us maintain the physical appearance of salvation, but inside of us, we are nowhere to be found? Listen to me, Church of God. Salvation came to us as a gift. But like with any other gift, you can receive a gift and just throw it away or put it somewhere and it gathers dust. And do nothing about it. And the Bible says, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. When you don't work out your own salvation, it's an indication that you are disregarding it. When you don't work out your own salvation, it's an indication that you are abandoning it. It shows that you are developing it. Jesus. And the Bible says, it is very, it's impossible for someone that has once worked with the Lord, if they go back, it's impossible for them to come back. It's a different sermon on its own. But do not neglect this great salvation. It costed God his only son. Do not neglect it. Jesus. Do not neglect the gift that the Holy Spirit has in your life. Do not neglect coming together as believers. If anything, we all should be looking forward to coming together as the children of God. Do not neglect to show hospitality. Do not neglect counsel, godly counsel. Do not neglect people. Do not neglect instruction. Do not neglect the minister of the word of God. For the day of the Lord is approaching. Do not neglect these things. Let's pray. Jesus. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Thank you for your word. Oh, yes, Jesus. We thank you for the presence of the Holy Spirit in this thank place. Thank you, Jesus. I am praying, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That let your word find residence in our hearts. 
Yes, Jesus. And may we act on it. May we not just be hearers of the word, but be doers of the word. Yes, Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You might have come to church today, and even as I was teaching here, the Holy Spirit began to talk to you or begin to show you things that you've neglected in your life. I'm not going to ask you to come to the front. I'm not going to ask you to stand up. But wherever you are, I want you to talk to God. And pray to God about what the Holy Spirit is convicting you on where he's showing you that these are the things you've neglected and ask him to restore those things ask him to forgive you and to help you to you know continue or to to go and pick them up from where you have abandoned them just in one or in one or two minutes in one or two minutes I'm encouraging you to pray pray concerning the things that the Holy Spirit is, is highlighting in your life to say you have neglected this and ask the Lord to forgive you and to help you to pick them up we thank you Lord